What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Reality Kingdom, where we put the real in reality or whatever. Period. Period. We are here with our wonderful co-host, Lee, and the wonderful Daniel C. from Big Brother Canada 11. Thank y'all for having me. How you doing, boo? Ciao. It's going good. <laughs> We're back in the streets. Happy to be here watching the show with y'all like I've been doing for the past how many years. So Period. everything's good. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, Dale. This was a spicy week, some might say. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least, to child. <laughs> to say the least. Um, so this week we were going into this to the week with this new alliance, the directors, a seven-person alliance. Spicy V wins HOH. When she wins HOH, her initial target's gonna be Vivek. Vivek had been beefing with Anthony. Last week, it was building up. So coming into this week, Vivek was the target. She had nominated Vivek and Elijah as the pawn. Then the veto was played. Dennis wins the veto. He decides to use on Vivek. And all of this led to tonight's episode, where we found out that Spicy V wanted to backdoor Miss Donna. <laughs> Donna, of all people. It was a lot going on with Donna, but we'll get deeper into that. She ends up putting Donna on the block, blindsiding her, and the spice is back. We're back, spice. Spice again. is back. And I honestly, me and Pharaoh was laughing about this on the phone. Like, it's comedy. It doesn't make it makes zero sense that Donna is going to be the second boot of Big Brother Canada 12. I literally said last week during the rating, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna give her like a five because I don't think she's gonna be yeah. going anywhere anytime soon. She shouldn't have. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm literally and shocked. Gagged. Yeah. Gagged. Would you have done this, Daniel? Absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. Uh, you know, one thing, you know, a spice is gonna do what she's gonna do. She's gonna make things entertaining. We'll say that. Yes. But I, then I didn't even see this coming, child. <laughs> It's crazy because initially I was thinking about how well she was doing. And I had been like, I was getting a little happy. I was like, oh, my girl is doing good. She ain't got nobody beefing with her. She's 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 laying low. She's not going right. to do too much. And then it's just like, it was almost like she just couldn't help herself. When you saw the scene of her. <laughs> like, don't do it, Victoria. Don't, don't do, do it. it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I would have said that was crazy. Why did you go to think? What did you go to do? <laughs> when she, she had the clock in person, she had to make sure she had she to just talk. make sure her eyes was like the camera was working. It, it wasn't even to say nothing. It was just to let them know I'm here right. and I see you. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> I was there too. Like spicy, don't do it, girl. Don't do it. Like, it, it was a weird. It's like I'm still trying to work my mind around why she got to this point because she could have really been positioned between these two alliances so well and then there's just those few people who aren't in them who mm -hmm. should have been her targets like the mm -hmm. uh, whoever let, else let me pull it up let me pull up the, let me pull up the images real quick because there's a few people who could have gotten nominated i mean not even know several men let's just say that no shame because okay and let's, why is todd not on the block why is todd not on the block because Initially, like we said, the target was Vivek initially. She came into this week, everybody was beefing with Vivek. At the HOH competition, everybody was putting their spit in Vivek's tube. Not spit, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> basically, <laughs> in Vivek's tube. So he had like he was the target. Everybody knew who was the target. It was almost like an easy ass, not even almost, it was an easy Very week. Simple. She's with the girls, Vivek's a boy. Put a pawn boy, put Vivek up, Vivek is out next week. And then, uh, like, and it was crazy because not only did Donna get backdoored, she wanted the veto to be used to backdoor Donna. She, yeah, child. She was worried it wouldn't get used. She gave Dennis the fire he needed to go in there and be like, I'm okay to win this. Yeah, literally. So I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand and the he, reason. I feel like Vivek, I mean, he literally offered himself up on a silver platter because the reason why, like, I mean, all this shit happened week one, but like the start of this week, he's literally mm -hmm. exposing that he was in some type of alliance or agreement called the East Coast with mm -hmm. Bailey, 
Donna, and Todd. Now, that's really mm -hmm. the catalyst of this all. Him exposing that in that conversation with Anthony for little to no reason at all, mm -hmm. he just randomly slipped it out, it really just caused everyone in that girls' alliance to be like, oh, well, Donna and Bailey are clearly working with Todd and Vivek. But I just feel like there wasn't a necessary need, to, even if that was a true thing, which is just completely not, they shouldn't have went after the women in that group. If anything, you mm -hmm. isolate them from Vivek and Todd. That way they have no choice but to work with you. I just, it, it really sucks that Victoria made this decision for me personally because I, I was really, really happy to see her play. And I wanted her to prove the girls wrong because I was saying, like I said, this will be her Aka Wong era, okay? She was going to go over here and run shit to the ground, which she still could. It's just like, by taking out Donna in this way, I feel like it really hurts her in the long term because I felt like as long as those women got to jury, a woman was winning the season. They control yeah. the votes. And what she did is taking out Donna. She's setting up Bailey to be targeted. It's just, I'm scared mm -hmm. that, okay, if Tola and Todd are in jury, would they just vote for Anthony? Like she was set up to where even if she was sitting next to Anthony, she wins this game. And yeah, now I feel one. like she's targeting her own allies. She's setting them up to be targeted. And then she's also keeping in the game people that I think will gravitate more towards Anthony because they set up this gender split in the house. So I just don't know why she would not want to play in that more. And it also just makes me feel like, are you just going to eventually do this to the hot chocolate girls too and lose their vote? Like, cause if this was jury, if, if uh, Donna was voting, this is a, a set vote that was going to spicy. That's now not voting her. And it's probably going to trash her name on her way out. So I just feel like, yeah. is this, gonna happen in the future and if it does i mean she's just definitely not winning i fear i feel like when it i'm scared like you said of it happening again in the future but i'm conflicted on if this is just because it's not a hot chocolate that she's able to do this but i can't i don't really know daddy what do you think i don't know i think that the vibe i'm getting from this is that she does truly have the hot chocolates back at least that's what i'm hoping i'm sitting here I'm like, praying to god please god uh i do think that this is because she has the hot chocolates back as strongly um as she'll need to now to get out of this because now she has to be all in with that mm -hmm. um and I think this was to strengthen the directors but it does put a target on her it was not the time to do it for sure yeah, it was weird because the alliance, first of all, it was it was random when Vivek exposed the alliance to Anthony because Vivek didn't even think the alliance was real. So basically he felt, I guess he felt scared when he saw <laughs> Why Bailey. did he do it? He saw, when he saw Bailey and Donna, I don't get why he saw the alliance, but when he saw Bailey and Donna put his spit in his tube, that's when he got scared. Like, oh my God, like they playing me, they playing me, they playing me. And his response to thinking that was to expose an alliance with him in it that's not real, that he doesn't think is real and no one else thinks is real. And it's like, baby, what is you doing? Like, I, I don't know. Vivek is a weird case because I like that he's playing so hard, but I don't know what he's doing in this house. I really don't know what he's doing. But is he playing so hard? Like, the, I'm, actually, I'm actually a little bit shocked by him because, like, when I was watching the pre- season like interviews about them mm -hmm. i was like oh he's gonna be the one to watch like he might be one of the ones who like really knows about so too. Yep. and i'm like now baby what are you doing like <laughs> yeah. what are you doing <laughs> i don't think he's playing i think what it is is he's playing hard but playing not good because no, a sure. part of him playing was the initial oh well let me get these for, let, let's get this because he did want the East Coast, even though he's saying this was just nothing. He wanted it. He did because he went around and he was making sure they was all good with it. And then he did have an initial conversation with Anthony where they were good. And then he just randomly abandoned it. And then he has these specific bonds with girls, including Kayla. And then he randomly snitched on her. She caught him. And it's like he does a lot of back, like backwards work. Like he worked right. on Anthony and then stopped talking. to him. And then he worked on Bailey and Donna. And then now he didn't care about them. And it's like, baby, you need to stick with somebody quick. Yeah. I don't know. Or like, even then, it's like he threw them under the bus, but he's like, I want to work with Donna, but I don't necessarily want to work with Bailey and Todd. It was just mm -hmm. like a like a lot of mess that honestly Victoria was able to just fuck with because in her mind she was like, okay, 
this is a real alliance. Like the 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 East Coast is a real thing. So I need to convince mm-hmm. Donna and Bailey to be okay with Vivek going up. So that's when she mm-hmm. started the whole, okay, I'm gonna talk to Vivek in the car. And she was basically pressing him, like, okay, your alliance sold you out. And he was sitting there like, I mean, Dougie? Is it Anthony? She's like, no. <laughs> Who are you just sitting in the car with? <laughs> Anna? Mm-hmm. So and? the alliance? <laughs> Not her trying to just pick at every single person. And right, literally. <laughs> Who are they friends? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like she was pressing him down. And that's when he was like, okay, yeah, the East Coast. And then it just, I feel like it just got so jumbled because like he said, he truly didn't believe it was a real alliance, but at the same time, mm. why bring it up? Yeah. And he brought it up to Anthony to expose it. But how you expose something that's not real and then you bring it up and what are you bringing it up for in the first place? And then you're throwing people in it under the bus and it's not real. It's a lot. But then even when he's getting called out on it, he's acting like he was confused in what she was even bringing up. Like he genuinely yeah. in that conversation with Spicy, he seemed genuinely confused in what she was trying to point to. And then he was like, oh, like, right. And it was earlier that day when he <laughs> exposed it to Anthony. And this is another thing. Why? putting the Anthony Victoria connection together. And that goes to everybody in the house because everything that gets told to the one, the other knows the same and that's damn thing. So obvious. Day. We have oh, seen please. I, I, and I, I'm okay, assuming some of these people are fans, but the next that he was <laughs> even in the US. What season of this show have returnees come in together and not <laughs> work with each other? That's <laughs> why like say what y'all want about Spicy V. But I'm not going to get on her for exposing the girls' alliance because at the end of the day, all six of those girls should have known she wasn't going to be loyal to that. It took her to put up Donna for y'all to finally get it. And some of them still want to act like it's not true. I just feel like it's so obvious. So I just feel like that alliance was going to be exposed the minute they tried to create it because why would you not believe that she was not going to run everything back to him? Speaking of speaking of running everything back to him, real quick, Donna, why the did Donna think she could throw up all people. Anthony motherfucking does it. Because she just doesn't and, believe And, and not just to Victoria, to anybody, you shouldn't have said Anthony now. I would have been scared to say Anthony to anybody. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> every time every person who's spoken out Anthony's name, Vivek, Janine, did Janine actually do that? Was that a lie? I don't remember. Um, <laughs> And her, y'all are going home. You're going home. So, yeah. I don't know why she did that. It, it It's unfortunate because it's like, so many of these people said they were super fans. Like, so many of them. Like, I really thought... And it, and two of them have been okay to be to be palms. I was like, two super fans oh my God. Me on the block. One super fan is... They're all t- telling stuff. They all believe Victoria and Anthony aren't together. Like, we all know. Super fans all know. If you go into that house, the, the vets are working together. A thousand percent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, child... Where where is their minds? I'm not seeing super fan gameplay. I really at don't. all from from not nobody. Maybe somebody in the hot chocolates. Maybe somebody in the yeah. maybe somebody in the hot chocolates. I, I guess maybe I one of the three. Give, I was gonna give like I feel like Lexus, Kayla, and Avery. Like I give them their tens because it's like I feel like they approach Spicy and Anthony with the thinking that they are working together. And I feel mm. like that's what helped them get into the hot chocolates and now they're in the directors. Like they're kind of good, but what I don't like for them as well is them taking out Donna, mine is Lexus. Now Lexus, you know. She Not Lexus. Lexus. She <laughs> does a little bit. But I feel like for the same reasons why I don't like Victoria, I don't like it for Kayla and Avery. I just feel like, I hope that this doesn't lead to when we get to the finals, okay, are you guys just being swayed by anything essentially mm-hmm. because at the end of the day this whole fear that don and bailey are working against them and working behind them back their back it's like one even if it is true like i said just take out the guys so they have no one else to go to mm-hmm. but it's not true quite literally at all and that just i feel like okay is one day lex is gonna do something a little bit too fishy oh she's with matt is she mm-hmm. actually loyal to the hot chocolates maybe lexus needs to go it's like that makes me feel like that possibility is there in the future and it's like how do you basically get the win at this point. Because like I said, like you're setting up for Bailey to also go pre-jury. That means only four women are going to be in jury. If one mm-hmm. of y'all are in final two, that's just three votes. Yeah. You know? And that's to even say you're going to get the other women's vote because if y'all turn on each other, then what? You know? I just feel like we're leaving too many wild cards like Todd. Why is he still here? You know? Like Tola. Why is the fuck is Tola still here? Y'all don't have an alliance with Tola. Yeah. You know? I just feel like there are so many other things that can be done. I, I think there's a level of they got too comfortable in the fact that they feel so safe with 
the hot chocolates and the directors that mm. they felt so safe that right now they're not thinking to the point where it's like, what if Tola wins the power? Mm-hmm. He's gonna take Donna gone out. now. Mm-hmm. He could have taken out Donna. It would have been Donna and Bailey Donna. Doms. But yeah. now so who's gonna, gonna take Bailey out? and Avery, Bailey and Lexus, Bailey and like one of the hot mm-hmm. chocolates. And that's so another part of the a boy, and that's the main problem. Yeah. The gender divide is still there in these men's mind. If Todd or Tola win, they're not putting up a boy at all. Yeah. If Donna or Bailey won, they were not putting up a girl unless her name was Lexus, no shade. But they were not going to put up and target a woman. And that's the mm-hmm. point. So why are y'all doing this? It's just yeah. not. I don't like that. And I want my girls to make it. And I want them to win. That's the main thing. You know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind if Anthony won. But it would just be nice to see four black women in the final four. That would be nasty. And two of them in the final two and one of them win. Like, come on. <laughs> give me my life. But I just I just fear that they may be, they, they're losing their structure, especially Spicy V. Like, her influence in this game was going to come with these women trusting her. We saw it in week one, like the way it just brought information to her and she could have really used mm-hmm. that to her advantage. And she crushed that in one week. Like mm-hmm. Bailey, I don't believe is going to trust her in the same way ever again. And Donna can literally leave this game trashing her name. I don't know if she will. We'll see. But I, I, just, I don't like it. I don't. I really don't like it either. And th- I feel like the, Pro is that the boys outside of the directors, I feel it's just it's so hard to combat a big, strong structure. And as soon as the directors was kind of made with the hot chocolates in the core, it's going to be very difficult for them to go against that, because even if I feel one of them win HOH, Tola or Todd or Vivek, as long as they don't nom two people in the alliance, they just nom Bailey and, and Victoria or they nom Bailey and Lexus or Anthony. But you want to nom. Todd at the pond or Tola at the pond because he's so close to Tola. It's like there's so many different scenarios where it's like even if you try try it, you ain't going to make it. And that's the the strength in the structure. But specifically for the girls, I just don't think it's it's making it's making a lot of sense. But even Anthony, the, why is Vivek staying? You could have made sure Vivek went because Vivek, it, in my opinion, I would be a little bit more scared of him. Donna and Bailey was plot. They was plotting, but I feel like the trust that Victoria had with Donna and Bailey was stronger than the trust that Anthony has with some of the guys. And if Donna or Bailey won HOH, they would hear Victoria out. And Victoria was like, I think if we take out, if we try to shoot at Anthony, we're going to get fucked up. They might be like, okay, you're right. Let's calm down. She can convince those girls. Those boys, y'all don't have, nobody has Vivian. Who got Vivek? Because he's looking at Victoria and Anthony now. Him and Dennis had conversations about how Victoria and Anthony clearly working together. I don't know what we were thinking. And it's it's looking like they need to go, potentially. So it's like, why wasn't they on the block? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's another scary thing about this move. It just exposed so much. Like, it's very clear that you're and Victoria working together. Yeah. And people didn't think that Anthony and Victoria were working together at first, stupidly, but now they know. And yeah. it also kind of exposed the hot chocolates a little bit if they're paying attention. Because mm-hmm. Donna and Bailey are realizing that the four girls made a decision on their own. There was even a conversation in the HOH room where the entire hot chocolate alliance, including Anthony, was mm-hmm. explaining to Bailey why this decision was being made. So I just feel like I, I, I really, really don't like it. That was so weird that they did that in front of Anthony. That was so weird that they did that in front of him. When I thought Anthony, because at first the camera was just on like two of them, and I was like, oh, it's the girl. And then they came back. <laughs> Why is he in the room? What are you doing? Leave. Somebody and, it's so, leave. and it's so obvious, like in the conversation he has with Bailey, like he's backing this up too. It just looks like Spicy kind of doing this for Anthony on the cool. It kind of looks yeah. like that. And it's like, if yeah. that's how it gets perceived, then like who's I said, for back to the women? final two, it's like, who's yeah. going to want to respect you? Oh, Big Daddy K in the chat. Period. She said, "Period." Nervous, protect Lex and Kayla. Come on, that's the best way to. Those the main two I'm looking for. They need to keep it. (laughs) I mean, I do think. Well, we'll get to that later. We're going to talk about position. (laughs) (laughs) But I feel like Um, the main the main thing also was like the argument that Victoria kicked up in this HOH because basically she got the vet in the car to say if he won, he would nominate Bailey and Todd. So she mm-hmm. went upstairs and told Bailey and Donna what he said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so a uh, uh, East Coast versus Victoria meeting is formed where Bailey mm-hmm. and Vivette is just going the fuck at it. I mean, straight mm-hmm. up yelling in the HOH room and Victoria on the sidelines just 
trying to not laugh in their face. And right here, I'm just like, I love this Victoria because it's like I loved it, but it was like it was sloppy. It was it was honestly sloppy and scary. I was like scared for her for her game because what had happened was well she lied straight to she's so quick with the lies. I'll give her that because she, she she cleaned it up. She's real quick. Initially, it. to what is that boy name? Vivek. She lied to Vivek and she said, I'm just thinking about I heard there was an alliance that was coming for you. And he said, Anthony said, no. She said two people from the alliance told her. Incorrect. Anthony told her. Everybody knows it. She lied. She said two people from the line told her, and this is the problem with the boo. And I feel like this was so easy to get her caught up in a lie. I don't know how she escaped it because she lied to him and said that. Then she went upstairs and told Bailey that he randomly confessed it to her. She didn't say that she pressed him. She said he confessed to me that there was this alliance. I don't know why he did this. He and he exposed your name in it. Then when they both got up there. Vivek said, she asked me. Bailey said, no, you just told her. And they didn't even clear that up in the conversation. They're too mad at each other that Literally, they couldn't even clear up what she was talking about. She all lied, down, down, face, just, then, just that quick. Literally, so, if they had all calmed down, they could figure out that this was Victoria playing yeah. in all of y'all faces. And but they kind of clocked that now by the end of the week a little bit. And I'm pretty sure Donna and Bailey do too. <laughs> no shame. But it's just like... <laughs> At this point in the week, I was like, this is so good because it's like she had a plan. She enacted it. Rebecca's going to go home. She's able to put them up. The girls are okay with it. But then we just start tumbling down. And then you put all this. She did all of this work to get out Vivek. Vivek. Just to not get out Vivek. And it's like, why do you all this? And then, you know what's crazy to me? Is the reason for taking out Donna is still unclear. Because I was telling Lee. If it's because she was in this alliance and she was scared of it, you knew that pre the initial noms. If you wanted to target Donna, why did you just target Donna then? And I know it kind of built up and she got more annoyed, but it's like the initial plan was to break this alliance up anyways. So first of all, you could have just nommed two of them off the get-go. Uh, and second of all, why remove somebody who was in the alliance off the block just to put somebody else who was in the alliance who was closer to you on the block? Nothing makes sense. And that's what's pissing me off. I'm gonna get mad. It's like what? That's what that's like, what? I don't get it. I, I think she did. I think it. I think it did have a lot to deal with the fact that she started to actually believe that it was real to some yeah. degree. Like she mm -hmm. did. It was. It, I think it was Avery selling the conversation that happened in that bedroom that did right. it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because now they're actually seeing these people as oh, they're actually gonna have each other's back. And now she's like. Ooh, Right, and, and I was why. trying so hard to find out why. Like, I was like, "Why Donna?" Yeah. You know, I'm seeing Donna yeah. everywhere, and I'm like, "I don't understand why." And I was like, "Okay, I and guess probably it's like why. the betray thing." Like, Donna yeah. was supposed to be with That's me. That's what I was gonna say. Vivek and Todd, they 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 was never really with me. Donna, you and Bailey was plotting against us when y'all supposed to be with us, and yeah, now I feel betrayed. She was like, "You're trying to play me like I'm stupid." Like, I'm not yeah, stupid. she was she was genuinely upset about that, and they've been like, and, and, and to break it all down. They've been a little bit annoyed with Donna anyways. Donna initially was pushing Lexus to be a pawn. She had been saying Lexus' name a lot. And the other Black girls, you know, they didn't agree because they was with Lexus and the hot chocolate. So them saying that, it's like, if someone is constantly in the game saying something that you just don't agree with, you're going to be annoyed regardless. Even if they make it, it doesn't matter. I, I don't agree. Keep, keep like, yeah, moving I feel on. Like, and that's the thing. It's, annoying. it's sad because for Donna, because it's kind of circumstantial a little bit. It's like, the alliance isn't real. Mm -hmm. But her relationship with those people are. So it's like yeah. they're taking situations of her, oh, fist bumping with Todd or just, mm -hmm. just um giving a hug. Wanting to Tola out more was the big Tola thing. out more. They're associating that with they're protecting the East Coast Alliance, which in mm -hmm. a way they are protecting their relationship with these people, but mm -hmm. this isn't an alliance. And I don't think that they actually would care if you were to take them out. Like the, even like the whole shit she started off in the HOH, it's like they would not have cared if you put up a back. You didn't have to like do this whole show to make them be okay with it. They would have been fine with it. They just would have rather Tola. But that yeah. just adds on to it. And I just feel back, like I said, it's like Donna was truly loyal to this alliance. Same with Bailey. So it's mm -hmm. like, I can see why they're just like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> and you know what, Lee? Putting myself in the perspective of the rest of the hot chocolates, I, I'm kind of seeing more and more why they were willing to do it. Because I was like, girl, what are y'all doing? But if I'm in the house and I'm literally thinking there's another alliance being built and it's including Donna, Bailey, Todd, and Vivek, these are people who not only I'm not aligned with, I'm not even close to Todd and Vivek. 
Jeez. So if I'm the am I if I'm them and I'm trying to play a step ahead, you gotta remember like I'm in the game. I'm trying to play a step ahead of you. So a step ahead of these people, it's like okay, y'all are playing me. I still will not get why Todd couldn't just be non, why we couldn't just make sure the veto wasn't used. I'm never gonna get that. But I get them trying to play a step ahead and be like, okay, we gotta break them up. But and to still, that. Like, and to that point too, they can add Dennis into that because they can see that Dennis and Vivek are, are friends as well. So, and like that's one thing too that like as soon as you see how well connected people are starting to be, that you start getting worried about it, right? But another thing to point out too, if you think back, that first HOH, which I mean, first week, mm -hmm. the questions like Donna was getting most annoying, like, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah, she, was getting, right. she was getting all of those things. So like, they already have those impressions of her. So I think that plays into it as well. That's mm -hmm. very true. I like the Vivek Dennis thing because another thing I was thinking was they were saying, they were having conversations on one of these digital daddies pre veto that Vivek and Dennis are really close. And we didn't notice this, but now they're like super close. And it's like, they low key need to be breaking up. And the whole thing with Donna and Bailey is we need to break up this duo. My thing is the more threatening duo is Dennis, who's the only other person who's won comps other than you and Anthony, boo. Nobody who's won a comp but Dennis. If Dennis won this next HOH, he on your ass. Baby, you could have let Vivek go at least to where he doesn't have that backup. Now Dennis got backup. If Dennis right. wins HOH, he might have been scared to do Anthony and Victoria if Vivek was gone. His main bro, his bromance, actually, is still in the house. So he's probably feeling real good. I just vetoed my bromance. They ain't even after us. I just won HOH. I just won two vetoes. Shit, let's get it popping. And he said he want to play for the fans, which they don't know. But still, y'all finna, <laughs> y'all could get fucked up right next to me. I mean, it's Dennis bad because Dennis and Vivek are talking, you know, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I do feel like, though, if someone in the hot chocolate structure win, they are likely gonna put up the bank in uh, Dennis' neck. I just think that makes the most sense. Like, mm -hmm. I do feel like Dennis told a Todd of a bank they should be leaving next week. But and like that's my baby go. I don't know. I don't know. No, nah. but I will say that's the thing though. If Toler or Todd start winning competitions, it's like that. Like that's my main thing. If these next two people in jury are Bailey, Vivek, and Dennis, that leaves Tola and Todd in jury. If Toler mm -hmm. or Todd win the HOH when it's just them and the directors, who the hell going up and going home? Maybe they can get Elijah on the block and he can go. Mm -hmm. But I'm just, I just feel like I would not feel comfortable leaving these stragglers here. And I just mm -hmm. don't want to Todd don't say shit to nobody and he gets a pass. Like it's just at the bottom, at the end of the day, they were in an alliance with that girl. And they trusted her. Like, I, even if they were two timing, I'd rather work with people who are claiming to work with me than people yeah. I have zero connection with. Because Todd could easily win next week and put you up. He has no reason not to. You took out his girl. She gonna and he don't know, know you. He don't know you. You know what I mean? Then boom, a ring, uh, we turn on the block. Then what? Then mm -hmm. what? It's just like I don't know. They definitely did not set Victoria. Did not. I feel like set herself up well moving forward. I feel like. At first, she was in a better position than Anthony, but Anthony, Anthony then, then took it a little bit. Because I don't, like, people are targeting Anthony, but I think people are too intimidated to, like, really, really do it. And then now he's being protected by the directors and the hot chocolates. It's like, <sighs> I don't mm -hmm. like it. It's just I do like it because I like him, but it's like, damn. <laughs> it's just easy to say that Victor Victoria is a pawn against Anthony as well, right? Mm -hmm. But I just, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, no, you're good. You can keep going. No, no, I was gonna I was gonna say, I just feel like with Victoria, as time passes in the game, she just makes herself more of a target. I feel like sure at this moment it's easy to say, but I don't know. I can't help but keep getting flashbacks from season nine. And it's like she does not know how to prevent herself from doing things that damage her game. We saw it just now, and it's like this was just so random and it could have easily damaged her relationship with Bailey and it's just like so. It should. Like Vivek and Dennis already looking at her sideways. It could have damaged her relationship with Bailey. We don't know what Todd's thinking. It's like so many people who didn't have her on, didn't have her on their mind. It's like, dang, girl. I don't know. I'm scared for her. I really am. Yeah. I really am. And the difference, like, it just like I was justifying a little bit her decisions in BBK and Nine because I was like, she was playing from the bottom. She was playing balls to the wall. It just made mm -hmm. sense. But it's like. When you're playing at the head of the house, it's like you kind of got switched up a little bit. And I, just, <laughs> I don't, I don't like this performance for her. And I thought, I thought Anthony didn't do that well his HOH either, but it was definitely better than this. But in general, though, like I think they're both kind of 
making themselves more threatening than I expected. But like, mm-hmm. I just like quite literally, if you take out Dennis, Quebec, and Bailey, it goes back to, I mean, no one's really uh, looking for them right now. Yeah, that's true. All right. Were there any more thoughts on this week that y'all had? Because if not, we can get into these motherfucking player ratings. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, y'all, y'all kind of just said it. <clears throat> said it. But, like, Todd and Tola, like, I don't know. These, Those are the two that need to be targeted right now, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, for for all of the reasons. Like, you always want to have <laughs> targets over you. And mm-hmm. those are the only two that are out of everything and they're not mentioned in any of they're going to slide by in this war that's where i'm seeing mm-hmm. it right i will say for me personally i think tola is controllable um i think todd is too but i feel like they don't have control well this is my thing anthony i feel like has control over tola yeah. so because anthony has control over tola i think he's the safer bet out of honestly everyone on this right side I would prefer for the hot chocolates Tola to be there because I feel like Tola's the one who can be convinced to target maybe Elijah. And I feel like these other people, y'all don't have no relationship with these people. Y'all don't got nothing with no. But that's the thing, and that's what scares me too, because it's like I don't I don't fully know what Anthony's thinking. I don't know if he wants to go to the end with the hot chocolates. I, I it's yeah. that's what he's saying, but we don't have the full scope of information. Who knows that he doesn't convince Tola? Okay, well, you take out Abe. Because that's the thing, he don't want to take yeah. out them. He wants their votes. Who's going to take out the hot chocolates if not him? Tola, Todd, and that's my thing. The girl should have kept Bailey and Donna because Bailey and Donna can go after the men to where Anthony has no one else to go. If he has no one else he can use, then y'all have him. They should yeah. I feel like they should have just let Donna and Bailey do that because they would have. Like, they literally want Tola out. They, like, so... <sighs> like she can look out Todd this week, take Todd away from them. But Vec is still here as a target. Tola is still here as a target. I just feel like, uh, whatever. I feel like they think they can pull Bailey in once Donna's gone. Because so who does she have at that point too? And that's basically mm-hmm. what they said. And they, like I said, they tried that today. And I think Bailey, she gives self preservation. I don't think she's gonna just go against the group because she's under the impression that she's working basically with the hot chocolates like she thinks mm-hmm. she's working with anthony and the rest of the girls yeah. so she's like an honorary hot chocolate at this point so i'm wondering how she is going to move forward but i don't know i like i can see donna really like i said just trashing their game and now that the vet has kind of got it figured out i'm just interested to see what information will come out over these next few days yeah i agree all right, let's get into the player ratings, guys. Last week we rated with Amal, so our last ratings are on the top. And then these new week's ratings are going to be on the bottom. Shout out to A, who are going to be there. Hi, friends. Period. Period. Yeah. Podcast cousins. <laughs> Period. Um, boom. So first, what we do is we start off with the Evicted House guests. We're going to give them an overall rating as a player, and then we're going to walk through um, backwards from the lowest rated player last week to the highest rated player, and we're going to move forward that way um, until we get to Daddy Anthony. Thank you. So, when it comes to Janine, and Daniel, we do 0.5s. So, okay. you do 0, 0.5, all the way to 10. When it comes to Janine, how would you feel about Janine's overall chances as a player, one through 0 through 10? Here we go. From, from the start? From, from oh, yeah. where so, so the evicted the evicted house guests we do overall and then like everybody else we're doing like kind of just based on what we've seen so far this week. <sighs> it's it's, it's <laughs> a tough, the child. You're starting with me, okay? It's a tough <laughs> one for Janine because I do think she had it. She was a super fan, and I mm-hmm. thought with the girls, if the girls actually stayed together, I would have gave her a high score. But because of how things played out, they didn't stay together. I'm going to have to give her like a th- four, three or four, a three. A three go in the middle. We'll, go, we'll go with three point yeah. five. The only reason is, is because I feel like if she took the information that she had been given mm-hmm. and used it, like she could have tried to f- flush spicy's game after all that information she could have had the potential to do really well so mm-hmm. i don't want to give her too too low <laughs> but just because she didn't use any of the information and i expected her to as a super fan i'm just gonna give her that mm-hmm. i i see that i really do i feel like with janine i kind of feel 
like exactly what you said. Like she had the abilities because she was a super fan. I felt like she was smart. She knew how to kind of navigate. She knew the the ABCs of the game. I needed to make an alliance. Let me make a fake alliance. Let me make a sub alliance. And I liked all of that because it was really, I thought, helping her game. And it seemed almost circumstantial that she was a target. At first, everyone was targeting Tola. It was kind of like her getting the butt end of a literal veteran, one of the best players ever, Anthony. I feel like an average player or a player who was new to this game, if they were in the season, they probably was just targeting Tola. They probably just went, okay, everyone doesn't like Tola. There's the house majority targeting Tola. I'm just going to do it. Anthony's a vet. He knows keeping someone like that is going to be beneficial for his game. It was just so, I feel, I feel like when we get veterans, the thing I kind of don't like about it every time is that it hurts some of these players who I feel like could have had a great run if they weren't here. Even Vivek, like, he ain't doing the best currently. But I feel like, <laughs> of course, he's not when your game is getting messed the fuck up by Anthony. What you going to do? This is this is one of the masters, baby. If Anthony wasn't here, Vivek game wouldn't have been messed up. He would have been fine. Right. Anthony was the good. first and only one pushing it. And then everybody else started saying it. So it's like, I just feel like some of these new players who, it seems like they're playing so terribly. And I feel like every season with vets, it seems like the newbies are playing so terribly. And it's like, okay, if that's literally every season we have vets that we think that, is it that the newbies are playing terribly or are the vets just eating them the fuck up? And it's like, this is kind of me seeing firsthand, I might think the vets are just eating them the fuck up. Janine probably would not have went home first. Vivek would probably not be doing this bad. So it's like, I don't know. I don't want to dog her too much, but there were still some mistakes. I feel like she was playing a little bit too fast, a little bit too hard, saying a little bit too much because there was a lot that that could have been used against her. And I feel like I don't like all of that. But she had the guts. She had the goal. I'm going to give her. What am I going to give her? <laughs> I think I'm going to give her the I think I'm going to give her the 3.5 as well, actually. Lee, how you feeling? Yeah, I, I agree. I think I'm going to just stick with the three I gave her last week, only because it's like I, with the earlier players, I never have much I can say. And it's just like, it's almost kind of like nitpick. Like, she didn't really speak to the HOH and then um, she was having a lot of conversations that I think were able to get her caught up, but they were able to bring back into to cause all of this. And just like you said, like, I just feel like she did kind of get dealt a bad hand, but you know, Somebody does have to go home first, child. That's true. And that's like my biggest. Were you scared of that, Daniel? Were you like, bitch? At least I can't go home first. Like, not first. <laughs> Y'all, you don't even know. And and that's the thing that I was like, free, like when I saw how many super fans, I was like, this is gonna be a different game. First of all, my game would have to been completely different in this type of group. But mm-hmm. when I was there, I was like, oh, child, I can't be coming in a super fan and then going home first. So the first week, I was actually a mess, and I, uh, I was a mess. The first week, I thought I was, I was like, oh. Oh, it's gonna be me. It's gonna be me. And then I was able to turn it around to some degree and go like make friendships. But child, I was scared to go home first. It, a lot of pressure as a super fan. That must be so hard. Janine took it well in our exit interview with her that very, we did post. So go check that out. Uh, very exit interview. Because we are doing extra interview press this season every Thursday when we drop in the exit interviews with the Evicted House guest. So check that out. If you didn't know, now you know. Period. Um, the next person who we rated last last week, and I will say they were rated last because Ma was being hard on them. They would have been like second to last. But it's Matthew. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> and I'm low. Why you give us a low? Honestly, I don't um I like Matthew. He's cute. He's rocking with my girl Lexus. Love all of that. Period. But also but that also, was brown. He, he a marshmallow with a hot brown. chocolate. Down with the brown, he has the mowing, he tall, the body is T. Like, what is there to hate? But, but no, 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 for real. When it comes to the game, I honestly don't even hate his game either. I think his game is a little uninformed. You can kind of tell that he isn't a super fan because the way he's playing is kind of like a older school player or someone who is just a newbie who's trying to learn. It's like first week we saw him pledge his loyalty to Anthony. I thought it was a good move. It was just like, is it just because you're literally loyal to Anthony? And now this week you kind of see he has a good relationship with Goose, which is kind of like, to me, it would seem random. But I mean, I have to 
I have to consider that for his game. He's playing the game. He has a great friendship with Goose, and him and Goose ended up in this new alliance, which he helped push. Like, it got brought up, and he was one of the ones who was like, yeah, guys, I really like these guys, by the way. I did like you. Like, he was doing a lot of work to make it happen, and I like that, too. It's just like the things he's doing, it's just it's hard to tell if he's actually, you know, intentional or if he's just if I don't, I don't, I don't really even know how to explain it. It's just hard to tell how intentional it is. But um, I think the things he's doing is good. I think he's in a pretty safe spot. Even a lot of the girls who were going to target him, which was really just Donna and Bailey, Donna's gone. Um, and Bailey got other fish to fry, baby. So I honestly <laughs> feel like he he'll be pretty safe for a good amount of time. A lot of the people in the alliance still like him. He's in a good position. I like his position, and I like the way he's playing. He's making good bonds. He's making good relationships. Is it enough? I can't tell because the digital game is. Everyone says they like him, at least in the alliance. But I'm like, just because? Or is he doing something? Can't tell. But I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him the five. I'm gonna give him the five. I'm feeling average. Lee, how you feeling? I agree with the five, and I agree with what you said. Like, it's all about the intentionality behind his moves. I think the most intentional thing he did was become friends with Anthony. But it's just like. With the structure that Anthony has with the hot chocolates, and I mean, he's the center of the director. It's like there's just so many things that Matt would have to go against to get to the end of this game and actually win it. And I also do see his little showman with Lexus become an issue within the hot chocolates. They keep mentioning it, but I just feel like at some point that is going to come up again. But he's not being touched, and because, like I said earlier, this gender divide is still in the house. If any male wins at this point, they're not going after Matthew, and the girls are worried about literally anybody else but Matthew because he's in their alliance. So I think he'll be good for a while. I agree with the five. Mm -hmm. I also am going to go five. Uh, I don't think that it's necessarily um, – the reason I'm going with the five is because I think he's positioned well. Um, mm -hmm. And I like I like the position he is in. However, I don't think it is intentional. I think he's just finding his way. <laughs> I think he's the man people he likes um, right now, uh, and it happened to work out for him. But mm -hmm. we'll we'll see. I, 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 game wise, I don't know if he's going to be pushing anything or positioning himself on purpose. But we'll see. Because right. mm -hmm. for players like him, Tola, Elijah, specifically him and Elijah, because they're in the directors for their games to open up at this point. The hot chocolate is gonna have to break up. If Anthony mm -hmm. is actually loyal to the hot chocolate and he does not plan on dropping any seeds, if Tola and them aren't able to win HOHs, then they have no chance at winning. But if they're able to kind of like, I don't know, if they can break it up. But if they somehow do not want to stick together to get to the top five together, then that is really gonna start changing things up. Mm -hmm, I agree. T Fran in the chat said it's almost like intention versus instinct, and I like that because that's what mm -hmm. I was thinking. I was like, it just really what it like is. It seems like Matthew has a good instinct uh, to preserve. He's a great preserve. Find the baddest you know, bitch in the house. You know, he said, yeah, let me be quiet. Time. Let me find a baddie and let me find a daddy. And that's what he did. Like, and let me, let me shut the fuck up. I and let me shut up. Shut up. <laughs> and, I, and I do think even if it's not intentional, I think it's instinctual. I think he's just like, girl, let me be quiet. And it's like, period. Shut up. Thank you. And look pretty. All right. So next is Todd. Todd was at the bottom along with Lee. Oh, it's Girl, he gonna stay at the bottom. Okay, what you get? Because we oh. can zoom past him. <laughs> he gonna stay at the bottom. I mean, it's, it's giving mm -hmm. nothing. I mean, he's losing one of his closest allies in the game. The only alliance Ally or that friend? he was really, really, honestly, <laughs> <laughs> the only <laughs> sort of alliance he was attached to was the East Coast, and it wasn't even fucking real. And he got exposed to something that he isn't actually in. For some reason, people are not saying his name. I don't know why, but that doesn't change much about him being actually involved in the game. Kind of there. Uh, also, remind me of um, um, what's his name? Dan, Dan, Dan a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right, Dan a little bit. It's just like I don't. I'm like, you see it, Dan. Where's yeah, your place? <laughs> oh, let me try. That's a friend. But let me let me say. But Dan was in the kitchen cooking. Like he was like, okay, so he was doing work. Like okay, he was just, like, giving people their meals. Like he fed sixteen people. Okay, mm -hmm. period. Uh, and he's fine. Now, Todd, what is Todd? Doing? Now, what are you doing? Are you bringing them drinks? Are you cooking? Them? Down. <laughs> he just got a, a new fiance. That's all he's he bringing to the table. <laughs> so, I mean, to me, I gave him a three last week. I'm gonna stick with the three. He's not in the game. Really? To me, all. a three is a little too high. I'm gonna give him two point five this week. He's not. Okay. Gonna be. <laughs> Dan, how you feel? I mean, Daniel, how you feel? 
I would <laughs> give him a two, to be honest. <laughs> Period. Oh, they loaded it up. I love a gift that come on. Thank you. I just thank you. I haven't seen him try to get in the lines. Try to do it like two mm-hmm. is just like you're you're doing good. Like no one's coming for you. But, but see, the, the girls usually okay. when they be like they be like, oh, I'm gonna give him a five because you know he's in the game and he's trying. To he's no. mine. He seems crazy. <laughs> Girl, please, oh please. Okay. <laughs> Next, who was really low, which I, I forgot he was this low, but I, oh, it's because she done gave Tola a fucking seven. That's why he was this low. <laughs> Shout out to a mom. I love a mom. I but, love a mom. Uh, <laughs> Dennis, Dennis is next, and I got some thoughts on him, but I'll save it for my turn. Daniel, what are you doing about this? Dennis, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm going to position after this week, I think that he's, I'm going to put him at a five, to be okay. honest. I am. I think that he's using his power. Like he, I, well, you know, I don't think he should have won that veto. So maybe I should uh-uh. take that down. <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on. You know, I, let, let me do four point five. <laughs> let's be I, safe. I, let's be safe. <laughs> yeah, let me take it down a little bit because I do think that he. I mean, he's putting himself in a position where he is making himself a threat. But besides that, he's using it in a way to work with. The P, like with spicy in that situation to like he don't have these alliances that he has but he's trying to get into the game I think and right. I think mm-hmm. with the way that he's using his power he's he's able to make those relationships to some extent that he won't be the main target so mm-hmm. I do think he's doing well and I think that going forward that number is going to shoot up if they don't get rid of him period I'd have to disagree oh. um <laughs> Oh. I'm feeling no, I, I won't fully disagree because I do think he has some some small um little you know positives of what he's doing. The the one-on-one relationships, like you said, the one with Spicy V, the one with Vivek, I think these are going to be helpful in the long run. However, I'm confused at what his game plan is. Like I, I'm not sure what his goal is. You don't have an alliance, you don't really have a group of people. I don't even know who you're looking at for a group of people. I don't even know who you want to potentially target. Do you want to win HOH? You didn't want to win Vito, but you did. And you won two of them. And you didn't use the first one when you could have just threw it because you were safe. And then you use this one. And this one was better to use, but also you shouldn't have even won it because somebody else could have won it and used it. And now you're looking like a threat and you didn't have to be a threat either of those times. You didn't have to win either of these Vito's. And now it's like, you don't have allies and you're kind of a threat. So all of that, I don't really like. And then when I watch his game conversations, I'm like, I'm not understanding. And I was talking to Lee about this earlier. Like, it seems like he's playing just a different game than what everyone's playing. Because the way he's playing is like, he's more focused on, okay, how can we game this veto? And he's like, okay, so who's going to who's gonna use the veto? And he had like five different conversations about who's going to throw the veto and who might do the veto whole time. He didn't even know who the renom was and he didn't even ask. And it's like, you, you're more worried about the veto than the fact that you don't know who could be nominated at that point. He thought it was him. Then he thought it was Matthew. Baby, Matthew ain't getting on. I, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't liking none of that. I have feelings so, about what you're saying, but maybe I'll wait until after Lee gives his. Okay. His okay. Point. Okay. So, so I'm going to give him because of that. I still do like, his potential, I feel like he has time to grow. And I like that about him. I'm going to give him, now I feel like there's so many other targets. So I feel like it'll be time. Not so many. Maybe two. So, uh, give him a 3.5. Lee, yeah, you? I mean, I um, I do, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying, Farrah, because I just feel like, I kind of got the same sense when I'm watching his conversations. It seems like there's just like unsurety when he speaks of just about like people's positioning in the game, his own position. Like I feel like the groups are kind of clockable at this point, and he doesn't seem to be like on it like that. And that does scare me a little bit because if someone like Vivek does leave, who probably will soon, will he just kind of be a little bit lost? Because almost, cause I saw a conversation with Vivek later to early. I mean, in today's drop, and they were talking about. Victoria and Anthony being together. And I don't know. It's just seemed like he was kind of like like confused almost. And Vivek was telling him, like, oh yeah, that obviously means they're together. And and he's like, Well, are you sure? I mean, do you think do you think Dougie knew that Donna was going up? And it's just like, you don't think Anthony knew? Or like, I don't know. It's just like mm-hmm. certain things he's questioning. I'm like, that really shouldn't be the main thing on your mind right now. It should be like, okay, what group do you want? Who you're gonna go after? Like, like you said, I just feel like 
I don't know what he his plan is, and that probably has to do a lot with the digital dailies. We don't see every conversation. I do like that he has a relationship with Vivek. It's very obvious that he at least is on the side of not being controlled by Anthony and Victoria. But it's just like, mm-hmm. where are you going to go from there? Because that is that's a problem. You're not being controlled by them. They know that. And now that you have these two veto wins, it's like the that's going to come back on your ass. Like they're going to be like, he can win. So I just don't think he has longevity really, unfortunately, at this point. Um, I, I can see him being nominated next week and potentially going home. If if the I mean anything could happen in this house clearly, so I don't know. I think I'm gonna stick with the uh, four I gave him last week. I don't think he's like immediate immediate target, but I don't I don't know if he's long for the game at this point. Mm-hmm. Girl, you so, messing up? Dang, oh, I switched us, Daniel. <laughs> so yeah, what I was gonna say about that is like two things because I feel like the part where he didn't want to know from Spicy who's the target and stuff like that. I think that's a very valid and good gameplay. Like I did that my early games too, when I wasn't established with certain people, like when it was Santina's HOH week right off the bat, where Mm -hmm. it was a way of him trying to be like, I trust you. Like I'm in with whatever plan you're going to be doing here. Like he knows he's not in with them. So Mm -hmm. lets them know that he's going to be able to be workable. Like he can work with them going forward. And I think that's what he's trying to do showing like yeah i could win and he knows he's not with any solid thing but like i'm gonna be able to work with you and i'll be able to get wins for you so that's why i think that he's mm-hmm. what he's doing knowing that he's not in anything big but i don't disagree with you that he should be clocking certain things so but yeah. I, I, I think if I they let that, him soon he's gonna go far i think yeah. yeah, and I, I think it's too is because he is the super fan. It's like, okay, I'm expecting you to be in it, Dennis. But also on what you're saying, like being like someone who could be used as malleable, like I feel like he is setting himself up with Anthony because I've noticed him and Anthony have a lot of random one-on-one conversations about his game, things he should do in the game, and his personal life. And I'm, I feel like I gotta be intentional. Like, there's no way you're talking to Anthony every single day one-on-one and it's not to kind of like better your game so i can see maybe mm-hmm. if you can convince anthony you can use me definitely i see what you're saying he can go far he doesn't want to seem like he's in a click he wants to right. seem like yeah. i'm could work with anybody i'm valuable to this house to anybody who wants to use me and i'm here to play when you need me to play but mm-hmm. i'm not on anything i'm not like don't i'm not part of the mess y'all talk each other he wants yeah. to know what where he stands on the back that's what i see from him i do see that um, next we have Bailey. Oh, <laughs> so last week I gave Bailey a three and this week I'm feeling even a little worse about Bailey. Okay. Let me, let me stop playing. So Bailey is very, I feel like just, just emotional, uh, an emotional type of player, because when it came to the situation with Vivek snitching on the Alliance and all of that. I mean, she didn't have to go off on him. And it was literally like, she literally was asking, so I like, should I call him? Like, I feel like I want to go off him so bad. She like basically requested to bring him up there so she can get in his ass. And I love that. Like, I love, I love to watch that. But it's like, also for the game, it don't make no sense because now you just making Vivek like, okay, well, I just, she doesn't want to work with me. And it's not even that Vivek doesn't want to work for her. It's more so she doesn't want to work with me, clearly. She's going to make it very clear who she doesn't work with, who she doesn't trust. She tells Anthony damn near every day how much she doesn't trust him. That's just so unnecessary. She literally like bickers with him back and forth, and he's not helpful in the conversations at all. But she definitely bickers with him about, literally about how she doesn't trust him and tells him all the reasons why she doesn't trust him. Baby, what's the point? Go make an alliance. Get a friend. Like, you're, you're using a lot of your time, and she does it, like, damn near every daily with Anthony. He's like, girl, you, and she spends also a lot of time talking to Donna about how she don't like some people. And it's like, she just has so much other stuff she needs to be worried about. And I feel like she hasn't had her head in the game. Maybe Donna being backdoor will snap her into the game a little bit more, and maybe she'll be able to kind of work her way towards something else. But at this point, I'm just not liking that. I think I do like the fact that the girls want to, string her along. I think after this, they'd prefer to target Vivek, Todd, or some of the boys finally. So I think she'll be a little bit more safe than some of the boys. But also, if a boy win, you could also just be the, the target. So, and, and I don't like, even though her safety might be okay with the girls, I don't like her long-term 
potential. I feel like she can never win this game, damn near, at this point. She will have to do a whole one, a full 180 to really win this game. <laughs> so I'm going to have to, I, I gave her a three. I'm going to have to just keep her at three. You're still at three. Good job. Um, Lee, how you feeling? Yeah, I think I'm going to bring her down to the three as well, mainly because she's losing her closest ally. And it's because of a situation that she's heavily involved in. Like, they're wanting to string her along now, but just how Donna left this week, she could easily go. I don't, I really don't see her making jury at this point. Um, however, I, I didn't think that she would outlast Donna, so we're here. Um, but like, like you said, it's just like, no matter how far she goes, I don't see like a winning path really at this point. And I don't know, she's so like, there's really not much places they can go from here, only because, you know, Spice and Vic. Spicy and Anthony kind of got the game wrapped up right now with this large alliance and the directors and the hot chocolate. So I just feel like she's out of options. So she is forced to be with them. But I just feel like Bailey isn't even the type of person to convince them that she's malleable and loyal and can be used. Like, I think they're always going to be threatened by Bailey because that's just kind of Bailey's personality. It's very in your face. Like, I'm going to go off on you in the HOH room. Yes, I am. It's like, and I just feel like, that's going to get caught up. They're going to catch up to her at some point because, you know, the girls aren't really trusting her that much, even with how much she's talking to them. And I just don't really see that going away because, like I said, mainly the type of ba player Bailey is. Like, I don't see her necessarily switching up how she acts or how she kind of is playing. So I'll just bring it down to a three. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all are saying she's losing her closest ally. We don't know 100%. Uh, that's it. Let's let's see what happens. That's it. Uh, now I would gag. I would gag if Donna stayed. That, I'm, that would be sure. of the century. Um, I'm gonna give Bailey uh, a three also, just because she has to be higher than Todd. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I agree. I mean, she's she, <laughs> the way she reacts is killing me. The yes will be stained in my mind. That yes. Mm. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, I think. I think the way that she, everything you guys said, the way she's <laughs> Anthony, the it's just she she's coming in too hot when she needs to be cool, and yeah. she's not even after this move on Donna. I think she needs to like chill out a little bit more and not seem so upset about it to make sure she's gonna be safe. But child, no, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, next is Tola. Um, Lee, how you feeling about Tola? Child, Tola, I mean, we really didn't get too, too much from him this week. Like, I feel like the main thing was, you know, Spicy kept telling him, like, I got you. You're safe. You're good. I like that, you know, she has at least cultivated a relationship with him. I do think that there's a slight chance he won't just go with Anthony because a lot of the work she's doing here. But I don't really know. I mean, he also isn't really in anything from what I'm gleaning from what we do see in the digital days with him. He believes he's in some type of agreement with Spicy and Dougie. Like, he's mm -hmm. on the type of time of, I want to go to the end with strong players, like all the strong players at the end. Woo -woo -woo. So, I, I, just, I we know he's protecting them. And I do think if he were to win, he's just going to get used, basically. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I gave him a two last week. I would say, I think I'm going to stick with the, well, I don't think I'm going to stick with the two because he's not necessarily as much of a target as he was. So, I'll go up to a three. Mm hmm. Damn. Um, I think with Tola, Chow, I'm gonna give him a <laughs> two to a same as Todd. I don't really see him. Period. Yeah, I, I haven't seen him doing anything. So I mean, but I, again, I I don't know. I don't know what's happening in there. I I don't know why he's not a target, but I also don't see him with friends. Whereas Dennis, I could see him at least trying to do something with what he's get got. Whereas. Mm -hmm. Tola seems to be calling people out when they're targeting him in the cops and stuff. Like, you're just going to become more of a target. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh. And it, it's different, too, because it's like with Tola and Todd, we're not seeing them do anything on digital days, but we also say no one talk about them. Because I feel like, I remember with mm -hmm. you, Daniel, it was like, we wouldn't see you at first, but then we see people be like, okay, I love Daniel. Everybody talking about something, we mm -hmm. love Daniel. So we're like, okay, clearly he doing something. Mm -hmm. But like, with Tola That's and Todd, a little bit like, how it is with Matthew a little bit. We hear about Matthew sometimes, yes. even if we don't see him. So yeah. it's like, okay, at least you're talking to somebody. Tola, I feel like in the sense that the black people can run him, he'll make it a little farther than some of the other people not in the directors. But then what? 
And I also feel like he doesn't help his case. He's very much so a self-sabotager a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. Like, he walks around asking people, so, I mean, were you talking to me? Or, or, or so who are, you, who are your clothes off? <laughs> it's like, who does that? Like, what are you doing? And I feel like I don't see him catching on to not being able to do that. So even though his position is better than a lot of these people, I mean, I feel like he's going to make his position worse by the way he'd be acting. Um, I would be so interested to see a Tola HOH, though. What he going to do? That would be interesting. I'm gonna give him I, a three. I thought we can touch my sister, so hopefully he. Oh, he, he gets won't. Ran correctly. He not. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, oh. they got. It. Child, it's gonna be Next is Vivica. Interesting one. Girl, interesting I thought one. he was gonna be out the door. A very, a very, very interesting one. Daniel, how do you feel about Vivic? <laughs> <laughs> the head scratch is sick to me. <laughs> I had so much faith and hope for him, but hey, he survived. He did something. He made a little laugh. Yeah, he survived. He's still here. Uh, I'm just going to have to give him a solid three right now and say, mm -hmm. I, I can't even fully explain it more so than I'm like, you're holding on for dear life. But he's at least seeing things. Like he's smart. Like he's catching on things, but he just doesn't know what to do with it. Like he doesn't know how to talk to people. So mm -hmm. that's the only reason I can't give him more yet. But I, I'm hopeful he could turn it around. Like I said, the beginning, you spiral as a super fan. So I'm hopeful for him, but mm -hmm. uh, I think that was the best, the best way to describe it. The he is he knows things, but he don't know what to do with it. Like yeah. he he's yeah. we get players like this sometimes. I can't think of an example, but we do get players like that who seems like they're smart, but they don't do anything with the information. Yeah. And I think the difference between Vivek is he's smart. And he tries to do things with the information and he's doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. um, or he talks too much about it. Mm -hmm. or, and, and it's like, that's even worse. If he was just like kind of, he was aware and quiet, kind of like Mimi from BB25. She was very aware. She knew a lot what was going on. She was able to understand dynamics, but she just was like, you know what, let me shut up and just sit yeah. here. If he would have did that, he probably would be long for this game. But I think he's going to do something. Yeah. When he wants to target somebody, he's going to do something. And right now he's looking at the two baddest bitches in the house and Big Brother Canada. So he needs to be quiet, especially because your ass was just finna go home. And I think he's going to do the opposite. He's going to do a lot of talking. Yeah, We're yeah. going to see this next digital daily. It's going to be the first, the first conversation is going to be with Vic. I guarantee you. And it's like, you need to not do that. You need to not do that. But I, I'm rooting for Vivek. He's a, he's a, he's a refreshing sight for me because I feel like of the non people, the people not with the gamers, I mean, with the veterans, he's the only one who's, I just, I don't know. I like, I, 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 I would like to see him and I want to see him longer, right. but will I? Probably not. So I'm going to give him a three and he would probably be going home soon. And I'm hoping for the best, but hey. Yeah. Leave I mean, the gag is, I thought he'd be out this week. So the fact that he isn't, I mean, maybe he got a few more weeks on him, child. What if he went HOH? Now that would definitely gag the lot. Ooh. I, I'm really happy that he's safe this week, though. I just, I like a good, a good healthy, um, opposition for my faves, especially when they're dominating the game as they are. And it's like, Vivek, he's fun opposition. Like, he's not actually going to beat them, but it's fun to see him clock them, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's long as possible to do that, but I just don't think it's going to last too much longer. Like, I don't see any reason why he doesn't get nominated and evicted next week unless he wins the competition. Um, and then, kind of like how y'all said, it's just like, he talks a lot. He said a lot of things. Like, literally this week, when Spicy is telling him, you're staying this week. He tells her, yep, I'm going to stay. I'm going to HOH, and I'm going after Dougie. And then he mm -hmm. tells her his planned nomination speech that he's going to do for Anthony when he wins HOH. And mm -hmm. then like, earlier in the drop, I saw him say to Matthew, like, yeah, the girls think they have me. They're trying to pull me into an alliance. You're telling this to Matthew, who's working with the four girls and the directors. And you at like, least know he's working with Lexi. So why did you say that? Like, it's just like he spread, like, he, and he tells the news, like, oh, be careful what you say. But he will basically say anything to anyone, a fucking body. And it doesn't seem like there's really real, like, intention behind it. Like, what is the goal of releasing this information here right now? And I'm a, I can only assume it's to make them feel closer to him. But, like, it only makes people more more suspicious. So I, I'm going to go with the three as well. I'm, I'm happy that he's here. But, child, is it going to last? That's exactly what I said. Because <laughs> literally, that's how I'm feeling. Um, next is Goose. And I had a back and forth in my mind with, about Goose. Because initially, I was like, I actually like Goose's potential because he is a fan. And he's kind of like, 
he he forced made his way into this this big structure and i was like that's exactly what you need to do for your archetype is giving you know steve ian you gotta be with this group be on the bottom be be happy with it and then win some comps and then win the game and i was like okay i like that and then he he volunteered to go on the block and i was like wait hold on but <laughs> But then, but then, <laughs> but then I was like, yes, that is very counterintuitive. And I still don't like that he did that. But a part of me is like, it makes me feel like he knows his role. And I think the most beneficial beneficial thing in Big Brother Canada is to know who, how you can play this game. If you try to go in that game and try to be this big boss dog, but you're really not a big boss dog, no shade, like Vivek, Vivek was like, Anthony, let me tell you how to play this game because you're not, not like that. But he was like, no, you can't be doing this and you can't be doing that. And he's telling people that if you try to go in this game and be somebody who you're not or try to play at a higher caliber, it's not going to work. Elijah, I think a part of me just thinks he knows he's a pawn. He, I know I'm hashtag the pawn. So I'm just going to be the pawn. I don't love it, but I do like that he seems self-aware. I'm feeling in the middle about him. Dang, you got a lot to say. Hold on. So I'm, I'm going to give him... I'm going to give him, and he on block. Why he on damn block? He gotta, go down. He gotta go back. He gotta go down because of that. Because why you on the? You're on the whole block. I almost forgot. So I want to give him a five, but he on the block. So I'm gonna give him a four. I'm gonna give him a four. Daniel, what? <laughs> what <are you> <laughs> <feeling>? <laughs> Child. Potential. The potential for Elijah. I saw it, and he still got it. But week one, I watched him. I was there. I'm the one who said it. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be a pawn all season? Elijah. This <laughs> man has no reason to paint that target further on himself. And the reason he gave for doing it, it's, Spicy already said, like, if anybody in our alliance, like, Kayla's going to be upset. This person will be up. He's like, I'll take the heat mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. And it's so easy because he's saying that, by doing this, he's showing how much he trusts his lines, which is true, and I get it. But we're still so early on in the season that you're already doing that, knowing that the people on your lines would be upset to do it. And it's mm -hmm. so easy. We saw it happen. Renee, from my season, she, it was because of a competition that made her sit there first. But then she mm -hmm. sat there for a, the whole damn season almost at the yeah. beginning. Right. It's like if they ever need a pawn, He's so happy. He hopped on it. Mm -hmm. He didn't even really get asked to do it. He hoped himself. It was worse yeah. than hope. He, did, he yeah. asked. Yeah. He asked. He, he told her to put me up. He told her. So, and it's just like, I get the game part of it, but it's just like the effect of what that can do to your game at this stage is like, you could keep mm -hmm. doing it. And it's like, you should already be fighting that. So, mm -hmm. and he's smart enough to not do that. So, but he's still positioned well. And I let everything else, it seems like he does got, good besides knowing his role like you said so i'll give him a four point four, four, four. <laughs> i wanted to give him a four but i was gonna give him a five but then going on the willing i wanted to give him a five too so so that strict we wanted to give him a five but we could because why yes. did that was and, and and literally, I'm I'm in agreement. Like I was gonna do the five, but it's the fact that you were on the block. Like it has to go down, and it's like like you basically said it, Daniel. You said it all. Like it's mm -hmm. like now, anytime they need a pawn, they can easily just be like, "Well, goose." Yeah. And guess mm -hmm. what? His ass is gonna go up, and he's gonna deal with it. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, unless the hot chocolate start breaking up, there is no winning pass for Eli Elijah right now. So we'll see where it goes. Child. Next, we got Don. Yeah. Daniel, how you feel about Don, huh? Not Don. Oh, uh, <laughs> not that, not Don. Part. Oh, Lord Jesus. Not <laughs> Don. Um, okay. <laughs> the crazy part is because it, when was it that we woke up hearing Donna was the replacement? <laughs> yesterday or today? It was like literally. Was it, was it like, today? It was, wasn't this morning. It was yesterday. It was yesterday. Was yesterday. Was, yeah. Until was that yesterday. point, I said, Donna is positioned great and she's doing good. Great. Like, even the way that argument went, she sat there and she ate her sandwich. And I was chilling. Like, perfect. Like, you let them fight. Like, Donna, I would have been giving her the points. And then, all, how did this happen? It's almost like this isn't even her fault. It's just the spice got too hot. And you know, when you put too much spice in the bowl, it's like chaos and things start going on in the stomach. That's what happened to her. She was just the chaos. 
So like, I don't even want to give her too bad of a rating because of it, but she's about to go home. So <laughs> I have to give her like almost the same as Janine. Well, no, I almost feel like she should be better because she was at least working with what she got. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give her four. I'll I give her four. Fair. I think that's fair. Yeah. It's just so interesting. I can't do nothing but laugh when I think about it because it's just like it doesn't make any sense. It literally feels like we somehow entered an alternate universe somewhere because it just feels weird. It feels random. Like, mm-hmm. and I feel bad because, like I said earlier, it's just so situational. A lot of the reasons that goes into it, like what these people are thinking, is just not true. Like, she actually was loyal to Big Sister. She she wanted a woman to win this game, and she really just got caught up in a bunch of shit that she had nothing to deal with do it mm. at all and it, it's shocking like you said it's like i thought she handled that argument really well because she was also pissed but mm-hmm. she didn't go off on the back she remained in a relationship with him maintain a relationship with todd and it's just like i'm just thinking donna could really position herself at least to get into jury maybe she can win a few comps here and there and it's like all of it dashed away like that like i think she actually had potential as a player but child mm. and like honestly, we'll never like, see him. A lot of people are making the comparisons on Twitter. It's definitely given what she did to Austin and BBK and not. Because I also mm-hmm. thought that was random as hell. And I was mm-hmm. like, why is Austin going here? This doesn't make any mm-hmm. sense. It's just, I don't get Victoria's need and want to take out people who are in an alliance with her. I don't get it. Like, at this point, if you go into working, if Daniel, when you work with all, the all stars with Spicy V, <laughs> you gotta <laughs> watch out. You don't have to tell me. I already knew. I said, I love my sis, but I got to be scared if I see a spicy V like, oh, Damn, I can't work with spicy because she's going to take my ass out. Oh, like, no, that, you have to make sure you're locked in besties with her. You need to make sure you're be better off being in the other alliance. No other, the literal other alliance. You'd be better off being <laughs> at this point. Because, damn. But yeah, with Donna, honestly, I think it's fair to give her a four. Mainly because, like, there's no reason she should be coming home this week at all. No, I'm just, really like, it doesn't make any sense. Even when she can't. was on the block, she was telling Bailey in the room, like, calm down. Like, it's okay. Like, yeah, you're going to see was. us. Like, she handles things so well in a way that I could see her being such a big player throughout the rest mm-hmm. of the season. But, like, damn. yeah. Very random. Very. Is. is Spicy V, she causes unpredictable things to happen. I just feel like this was so unpredictable. I don't know how to feel about it. I feel the same way y'all feel about it. The only knock I do got is her pitching the renom to be um, Anthony. Anthony. Why she did And that. I was like, now, nah, baby, please. And that's just like a, a honestly, what, what's annoying is that doesn't even seem like that was really the reason. It seemed like the reason was all this other stuff. And she was ready to do it anyways mm-hmm. prior to that even happening. Then it happened. And she was like, uh, 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 you definitely going up. And it's like, she was already thinking of putting her up, which is what was the crazy part. But. I just feel like her suggesting Anthony was like a small, like, oopsie, she shouldn't have did that, calm down, but it's still better for Victoria Games not to put her up. Like, whenever the HOH is doing something that's not good for their game and that person's going home, I always want to give that person some leeway because it's like, this girl fucking her own game up, taking you out. You should not be going here. So, you know, I'm going to give it a four, too. I'm going to give it a four because the base card is T. Four for the base card. Period. Um, (laughs) Period. Next, we have Avery. Daniel, how about Avery? She's an interesting one. <laughs> okay, so again, pre pre game, Avery was my win, one of my win, probably my winner pick pre game. Okay. Um, she offered to be a pawn, so she did. So I'm gonna <laughs> don't understand it. Um, I think she's positioned well. I think she is loyal to her allies at the hot chocolate <laughs> at least. So I think she's doing really good. I'm gonna give her. I need to just think about how I'm gonna give the other ones so I don't give her too high. I'm gonna give her a. I'm gonna break my break over. I'm gonna give her mm-hmm. a six. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll give her <laughs> six. I think she's positioned, but I don't think she'll be the target. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I really like Avery's. I love Avery's positioning, and I love her. I feel like her ability to be a good social, really position nerd. That's the best way to put it because her social game itself, people found her annoying at first. So she's clearly not that fun for people. I just think she's great at positioning herself within the social relationships of the game. Like she's great at being Victoria and Anthony, you know, uh, you know, you know, sister, like little little sister, and then she's also good at being good with the girls and she has okay relationships with some of the boys a great relationship with dennis and i really love her ability to get in those good positions but she just oh and this makes me even think more of this comparison 
and I hate to use this person, but Christmas Abbott, like, has the same ass qualities as Avery. She was really good socially, but she was just a loyal But they're confused. You don't even know who that is. They don't even know who that is. But now listen, listen, hear me out. I don't know who it is. I'm just confused. (laughs) Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. When it came to Christmas Abbott, why am I saying this lady name? But anyways, when it came to her, she was a very loyal soldier. She's going to do anything for the alliance. She's going to do anything for her allies, regardless if it's good for her game or if it's not for her game. She don't give a fuck. It's about the alliance and the group that I'm with. And she was really good socially. She had relationships outside of the alliance, and she didn't give a fuck. She took them girls out because it was bad for the alliance quotations. And Avery is that. She is the person who is going to play in this game and do the best for the alliance and not the best for her. It don't matter if Dennis said, I'm never taking you out, Avery. Avery will take Dennis out. And if Avery wins the next HOA, she should not take out Dennis because they have a relationship. She would. for If she feels it's best for the alliance, she would. And that's her fatal flaw. And players like that ain't never going to win this game. It's very hard for players like that to win this game. I guess you could say maybe um, like Casey from Big Brother 20. She was very, very loyal. She was going to do what's best for the alliance regardless. She didn't give a fuck. And she won the game. Um, that was very, you know, circumstantial. And I feel like if this season ends up in a circumstance like that, which I think it could actually, I could see Avery win. I'm not gonna, gonna lie and say I could. And so I, I, yeah, I could see this game because the the people at the head are slipping up a little bit. So I do I do see it for her, but it would have to be I played a loyal game and I made it to the end, and that would be it, which is still boring to me. So she getting a six just because of that. So I agree with the six. I do. Well, actually, I'll give her six point five. I'll give her six point five. Mm. I agree with the six because I don't like the decision this week for any of the girls to take out Donna. I think I would have been on a seven if that did not happen. Um, I, I agree with you a lot. With her social game, I think it's really, really good. And from what I've watched in the Digital Daily, it's like she likes to make these personal connections as well. Like she tries to really like take away the game and kind of get to like the, the breakdown of who they are as people. Like I think a lot of people feel like they have Avery and not a lot of people actually do. I feel like I was comparing her in my head to Izzy from BB25, where mm-hmm. it's like she had this loyalty to Sari and Jared and she was kind of like essentially choosing to lose the game just to go to the end with them. I do feel like Avery is kind of in that spot with, with Dougie and Victoria, I think that she does not want to turn on them. And at the end of the day, can she win next to them? Potentially if they keep slipping up. But it's like, it's not going to work if you're taking out people who's going to vote you. Like, I think Donna could have been potentially a vote for an Avery, depending on the scenario. And she let that go. Janine? Janine considered Avery as one of her top people. Like, anytime mm-hmm. people are creating, like, a subgroup within these alliances, Avery is included. But Avery... Yeah true loyalty is to Victoria and Dougie. And so I just feel like, is she going to continue slicing off these people that she has a connection with that gives her influence because she wants to go to the end with them? And like, I I would hate that. I would hate that for all of them, especially that I was just like, this week showed me that it's like, how much are you guys willing to give up pieces that are for you? The issue is they didn't see Donna as a piece, but that scares me because why the fuck not? Like, she was Mm -hmm. so loyal to the girl. And it's like, how is that not obvious? Yeah, especially like, I, like, and it's like I don't get why it's like why Donna when you have Todd right there is like mm-hmm. Donna is at least in the girls thing. If if you're so worried about Donna being with Vivek and Todd, then take out Vivek and Todd. Yep. So yeah, I, and I don't like that from any of them. Except Lexus, who is next? Except Lexus, who is now. Next? Let me start with this mother Alexis because this, this is the issue because I felt this this what's happening this week is literally other than for. For Anthony, it's probably and it's probably not even best for Anthony. It's okay for Anthony. I feel like it's best for Lexus because the only person who had Lexus' name, well, not the only person, but the main person who had Lexus' name in her mouth was Miss Donna. And Donna was trying, like, no, doing wait, wait, no. work. Wait, for- what's hilarious is that no, sh- the Donna stands will be mad when I say this, but it's kind of funny that she was like, "We should probably Lexus this week." Well, <laughs> well. This is what happens when you and it's it's giving Taylor Hill karma. It's giving it's giving bad bitch karma, baddie karma. Because you're not supposed to speak against the baddie like right? you, you can't really do not. that. Keep you it, can't just do keep that. it. Keep, just just think it in your head. Just think it in your head or save it for your bestie. But you were saying it to too many people, and it spied right back on your ass. But anyways, Lexus, I do. I like the. I, I don't feel bad about this this particular move for Lexus. What I do feel scared about is the fact that. I think the energy that was have towards Lexus could come up again 
Yeah. And I'm afraid for that in the future. I feel like even though she she does do good work socially, I do think people like her, her energy is still always going to be her. She's just herself. She's just who she is. And that type of energy, it makes people uncomfortable a lot of the time. And I can see it coming up in the future. And I don't like that for her, especially because she has a showman's now. Now she's locked in with Matthew, and I feel like that could easily become a problem. And what happens with showmances is, is if both of y'all get to this big blown up type of target, even if you take out Matthew and it's like, oh, he's gone, you still kind of see Lexus now as this, Ugh, she was attached to Matthew, and she's just, she, it's lingering effects of that, even if your showman goes before you. And I feel like that's going to catch up to her in this game. So I'm not happy about that. And I, I just feel like I like that she's in the alliance, but I'm not sure how... I'm not sure this hierarchy within this alliance. Like she has Matthew, but I feel like that's going to leave her towards the two people not in the hot chocolates. Now you're associated with a non-hot chocolate. So the four other hot chocolates are probably going to feel closer to each other than you. And I don't like that either. Um, but I gave Avery 6.5. I think I'll just also give her the 6.5. Even though I like this movie better, I just feel like her game has a little less longevity. Um, Daniel? Um, I agree with a lot of what you were saying. Like the worry for me is the showmance, but that does also add that level of you have a protection as well. If it's really mm. going to be a showmance, um, I was initially going to give her a seven, but I do think that Avery has more. It's just a little bit set up better to go further. So I don't think I can put her above Avery. So I'm gonna put her at six point five as well. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think I'll also just go with the 6.5. Uh, I like the fact that a target that was saying her name went home this week. I also like that she's in this showmance with Matthew. It gives her just a slight more protection and a little bit of a buffer. Um, and, but the main issue for Lexus Gang right now is the fact that I feel like it will come up again. And how will that be handled? Hopefully, it just means taking out Matthew. But then... Lexus, you know, she's going to be a little bit of a comp beat. So if they think mm -hmm. that she's going to be in top five with them, she's going to be winning competitions, you know, I can see Lexus kind of, you know, dominating her way to the end. Imagine her and Matthew start trading situations when we get to a jury phase, you know? Oh, okay. So I do feel like she kind of has the added safety by having someone like Matt. You know, like like Avery, they don't Avery, she doesn't have uh Matt or Elijah necessarily. Kayla doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. have that either. Like the fact that she has Matt, Matt will choose her over the other three. I like that because I think that he's gonna be with them for a minute. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um next is Daniel, did you have Avery and Lexus 6.5? Yep. All right. Next is no no no. I, I had Avery. Oh, yeah, I did oh. have. I had Avery at 6.5. Okay. But, um, next is Spicy Victoria. Daniel, <laughs> what you believe for good? I don't know what I'm going to give her, so I actually need to hear both of y'all speak. Okay. Go ahead. Spicy, spicy, spicy. Okay. I just want to make this very clear. That's my sis. Love her. <laughs> I absolutely love Spicy. And one thing she's going to do is come to entertain. But if Period. I'm talking about her game as a full, I'm going to just put her in the middle. Because okay. right now I feel like, I like she could have crashed and burned, but she could also be setting herself up okay if the hot chocolates gain power or the directors win again. Then I think she's positioned like well. But the decisions... I don't understand what's going mm -hmm. on in her head. I'm going to give her a five. <laughs> I like that. I actually like that. Lee, how you feeling? Uh, with Spicy, I just feel like, I mean, I gave her an eight last week. I Spicy was at the top of this game. And all she had to do, even with the nature of H, was to just stay calm with it. Like, and like, like we saw on the episode, like her being like, Victoria, you don't do it. Victoria, you don't do it. Like, that was her. And I get it. Because in real life, I really understand it. A bitch is testing your patience. She felt like, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Donna is cheesing the fuck out of me. She's trying to play in my <laughs> face. She think I'm stupid. And I'm not stupid. I'm going to show that bitch I'm not stupid. Ooh. Okay, that mm -hmm. I feel like that was her energy. <laughs> and it just, because what, what they thought Donna was doing was not actually happening, it just doesn't make any sense for her game. It just slight, it just really does not. She's ruining a structure with Big Sister, and she has no relationship with a Todd. Vivek does not trust her by the end of the week. She doesn't really have Dennis at all. 
she doesn't have Tola over an Anthony, I don't believe. It's just like she really only has the hot chocolate uh, core, which isn't a bad thing. They're running the game right now. It's just when we start getting towards the end game, how is she going to navigate for herself to get to the end? I feel like she's obviously something, someone that does not handle just the pressure of power that well. And if she wins again, let's say it's top six and it's no one but the directors and or other than the hot chocolates, what are you going to do? And not, not only what are you going to do, how are you going to do it? The way mm-hmm. she did this pissed off and shock the entire house. That's not going to be good for jury votes. That's not going to be good for perception in the game. It's very easy for people to just be like, you're doing this for Anthony. I mean, Donna and Bailey kind of already clocked that. It's like, Anthony didn't want us in the house, basically. It's mm-hmm. like, and if they're perceiving that now, I can't I can't imagine them. They won't, People won't think that later on in the game. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't want to go too, too low on Victoria, only because I feel like, this is more of a long-term issue. Like short-term, she's still good for, I feel like, a while. But if the right person wins, mm-hmm. it could be her and Dougie on the block next motherfucking week. So yeah. I don't know. I don't like that she did so much that it just exposed so much and it just fucks her up so much in the long term. But I think she's going to be still safe for a while. So I am going to go with the six. Mm-hmm. But she just didn't need to win this H H-O-H. She didn't. She didn't. One. That was one. But the thing yeah. is, it was an eliminator. Like, she won because she was in the best position of the house. No one mm-hmm. wanted to take her out of the game. It's like, damn it, Victoria. But it's like, ugh, whatever. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, Period. Lightning bolt. Go ahead. Go to YouTube. Please hit like and subscribe. Thank you. Here I am. Here I am. Um, I agree with everything y'all said. Oh, Victoria. Because you you're rooting for her, you know you're rooting for we're rooting for you. We were all rooting for you, and I don't want to have to say that at the end of this game. I don't want to have to be uh, Tyra Banks at the end of this game yelling at you because my mom is the only person who yells at me like that. I can't do that. <laughs> so, Spicy me, if you can hear me through the grapevine, please, please get it together. <laughs> this was crazy. <laughs> this was this was very cra- this was spicy. But it was very, it, I, just, I can't, I can't do it. The decision making throughout the entire week, even the, the, you didn't have to, she felt like she had to turn the girls against Vivek. No, you didn't. Just, just put them up, baby. It's okay, baby. Because even that was just sloppy and messy. If they would have talked too much, if they would have talked about it, it could have just got it. It's still to this day, Vivek and Bailey are both in the house because you didn't take none of them out. They can still talk about it. Vivek can still, th- that first conversation he's going to be having on the stage with Bailey is going to be with Bailey. It's going to be how Victoria needs to go. Like, I, I know it. So it's like, why did you, why, 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 why? You did all of that. And then the fact that you did all of that and still didn't take either of the people involved out. You took out Donna, who was eating her sandwich. And then you took out Donna when she was in this girl's alliance. It just doesn't make any sense. I don't like any of the decisions. And if this is your decision-making skills, no shade, you ain't going to win the game. If this is how you're making decisions, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. Unless, unless it's like, oh, well, nobody else can win. Got to give it to her. And it's like, I wouldn't want that win for you anyway. So I'm scared for her. I still think she has potential. She's been playing better this season. She's been laying a little bit lower. Maybe when she's not HOH, she'll retract back into that thing. But there's people looking at her. Dennis and Vivek got you clocked. Bailey probably ain't going to trust you for the rest of the game because what are you doing? And then none of the boys are really, really working with you except Tola. And then, you know, Matt and Elijah are in the thing. But it's like, if Todd win HOH, what he going to do? You know, it's like there's still people who you could have taken out who could be targeting you. It's like you didn't even take them out. So I don't like a lot of the things she did this week. So for that, I'm going to agree with the five that Daniel gave you. Um, you still my sis, and I'm still rooting for you. Good luck. <laughs> um, <laughs> next, Lee, is Kayla. Lee, how you feeling about Kayla? I don't. Because in the beginning, I'm just like, okay, I think Kayla is someone who's going to do really, really well in this game. But I just feel like she's definitely not in the position I had hoped. I just w- would like for her to be more connected. I also hate the Donna decision for her. And she's also kind of just on the same, like like when Lexus jumped on it, it makes sense. Lexus has been told the entire last week or so that Donna has been having her name in her mouth. Kayla jumped on it. I was just like, okay, this is the same Kayla that jumped on not trusting Lexus. 
And this is the same Kayla that was like, does Dougie have a separate alliance with Tola, Matt, and Lexus? And now this is the same Kayla that's like, yeah, I think that Donna was having Todd walk around and and and, and listen for things. I'm like, okay, Kayla. Now you starting to act like spicy. Y'all overthinking shit together. And that's really what it was. This, these four girls came together and just overthought this entire situation. And I'm just like, that's scaring me because she's she's I feel like she's overthinking like some of the small situations. And also she doesn't have the connections like that. She doesn't really have Matthew, no connection with Tola. I don't really see her talk to Dennis like that. She had a relationship with Vivek, but he he wants to continue it and she doesn't really seem to at all. It's like I'm like, who else does she have other than the uh, hot chocolate as well? And that scares me because I feel like she is someone that could get a target on her back because her presence is just so, I feel like, I don't know. It's, 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 I, I feel like to me, she gives like winner energy. She gives someone that's going to win and, and be a leader. And I feel like that may get clocked. It depends on how everyone stays loyal to the hot chocolates. If, if they're able to stay in the directors and stay to the end, as the hot chocolates, I do think Kayla may have a chance because, okay, she has Avery. I think Lexus would kind of stick with the girlies. If the girlies kind of come together with this four, you know, there's a possibility for her. But it's like, I just, I don't know. I just, I feel like I want to see more from her. And like I said, with the other girls, I just don't like the decision to go out, go after Donna, especially when there's other people in the game that she does not have a relationship with at all. And in Kayla's position, she's not the HOA. She could go ahead and make a relationship with them. And she, isn't really so i don't know mm-hmm. i think i'm gonna go with the six for her as well mainly because of the positioning but i want to see more from miss kayla mm-hmm. daniel how you feeling you know you swayed me a little bit i'm not gonna lie but i'm gonna stick back to my guns because for me i thought coming into this i was like kayla's the best positioned in the hot chocolates mm-hmm. threat level wise is what i was thinking but mm-hmm. now i'm like I don't, and I don't know if it's just the lack of what I'm seeing on feeds, if it's just what I'm believing from like how I thought things went when I was in the house and stuff too, where I'm just like, I don't think she's a target to anyone. But I, then again, mm-hmm. I don't know who Tola would go for, Todd would go for based on what mm-hmm. I'm seeing. However, I do think people see Avery as somebody who would attach to like Victoria. Like they can see how good they are, where I don't think they look at, Kayla like that and see her in any pairs and they can mm-hmm. put Lexus in a pair with Matthew and they can do all this stuff whereas Kayla I think is just friendly with the house mm-hmm. their alliance isn't fully clocked so I think that she is actually very well positioned so I'm going to give her a 7 gagged alive gagged alive I um yeah I like what y'all are saying because I agree I, I feel like th- what I do feel like about Kayla is when it comes to her positioning, I think she's going to be the best in this game as at managing her threat level. I think she's going to be the main person who we're seeing who probably should be a threat, who isn't going to actually be a threat. I think she'll be good at that because she is, like you said, she's generally friendly with everyone. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side, I feel like she's generally friendly with someone. In those one-on-one connections, I'm like, one of them was Don. Right. She's going home. That was one of the one-on-one connections she had outside of the lines that I really liked. She's going home. And when it comes to everyone else, because we don't have the feeds, we don't know. She probably does have other connections because kind of we hear other people talk highly of her. We've all, I feel like it's been a lot of positive about her. Um, so I think people like her, but we don't see it. And from what I see, I'm like, who are you good with one-on-one other than the, the hot chocolates? And I think it could also end up being by the end of the season, like maybe – a situation where within the hot chocolates, she's the least likely that everybody else will target, or she's the least likely that they'll target within the alliance. Like, I don't know. I just don't see who's going to take her out. Like we, like what you said, Daniel. At this point, I don't necessarily see anybody who's going to really target her. If anything, they'll target Victoria and Anthony before her, or just Lexus, because Lexus is attached to Matthew, or just Avery, because she's the easier hit other than Victoria. If you're not going to hit Victoria and Anthony, hit Avery. Like, she's, she's very, like you said, protected. And I do really like that. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it was a tough one. I it's just, it's just it I, I, I felt. Very, to convince me. <laughs> I felt very like, 
not happy about this decision with her specifically. Spicy B, it was expected. She's Spicy B. Lexis, Donna was going after you. Avery, you know, I didn't think much of her anyway. No shame. I didn't think she was going to, like, eat it up strategically. Kayla, I was like, Kayla's going to eat it up strategically. And then she came in here doing this. So it's like, I'm trying to decipher, am I just, I had too many expectations for Kayla when I didn't know her. So I feel Maybe that's what it that. is. I, I think felt that's so what high. Is. And then I stopped mm -hmm. giving what I thought it would give. Mm -hmm. But, but I, don't think it, I don't think it's as bad as I thought felt initially because initially right. I was like bro what is you doing but I think it's because I expected her to be mother and maybe she's just you know you know stepmother um <laughs> and if that's the case that's still great so Stop. I'm gonna give her 6.5 as well I'm just gonna give her the 6.5 okay the middle the middle I see that cute. I'm just gonna keep it cute. I'm gonna keep it cute. Oh, my man is next. My man, my man, my man, my man. Uh, Poutine Poppy's biggest fan. My, 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 my man, my man, my man, y'all. I never stand nobody on Big Brother the way I stand. And look, I get it. He be talking to people crazy. Yes. I don't know why he be talking to people like that. He wouldn't be talking to me like that. He wouldn't be talking to me like that. But, but I, you know, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm not in the house. So me personally, he ain't do nothing to me. And I feel like that's what we have on stand Twitter. Y'all be like, oh, he's just talking to the person. He ain't talking to you. He's not talking to you. The person he's talking to needs to be mad. Why are you mad for other people? Let them be mad over there. But me personally, he ain't do nothing to me. So I'm still standing. That's still my man, my man, my man, my man. man. Now, why is he arguing with Bailey every day? I don't know. Do you got a crush? He needs to he needs to check that because I'm watching him. Um, I don't know what that is. He argued. You're really out here critiquing him like your man for real. Like <laughs> he, he argued with her a little too flirty. Like, I don't like that. Yeah, you're a beautiful girl, but what? But anyways, let me calm down. I'm gonna be mad. I don't like that he argues with Bailey and tipple tapples. I don't know what that is. They have this weird friendship, but also it's not. It's like a frenemy thing. Cut that out, please. Vivek is on your ass. Why you let him? Why you let him get off the block this week? That was crazy. You could have. You could have made sure that man went home. But also, I guess Donna was on your ass too, so you had to let it happen. So I don't know. It's just too many people on your ass. I don't right. like that. There's so many people on your ass. It's a lot. Donna's going home this week. You not mending nothing with Bailey because y'all stay beefing and Vivek and Dennis is on your ass. So it's like that's a lot of people who may have their eyes on you. If one of them went H O H and they putting you in Spicy V up, Spicy V can get these votes, baby. It's not that hard for her, I feel. So it's, it's you're not in the best position. You're really not. I don't feel like he's in a great position. I feel like he does good work sometimes, but also there's times where I'm like, you a little too confident, like. Sure, you're a great player and you you know your worth. But everybody else doesn't need to know that you're a great player and you know your worth. Like right. you, I feel like he's he's getting a little bit too too big headed about his game and it's causing him to act not in the best interest. It's kind of better in Big Brother when you're scared or when you're nervous or when you're not confident. When you're not confident, you'll play in a way where you can protect yourself. And I feel like he's not protecting himself the way he needs to be. I don't like that. He's still in the main alliance. He's still in the core. I feel like he still has a lot of good ways to go. But there's so many people outside of it looking at him, and I don't like that. Um, I don't think he necessarily has done things this week, but he hasn't done this things this week to, like, help himself either. Ooh. Because he could be numbed. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> I feel like you're Dang, a... what you gonna give him? Because I don't know. You want to jump to me? My, I actually kind of a little bit disagree with some of the stuff you okay. said. Well, I I agree overall with what you're saying, but I don't think I can judge Anthony based on having a threat level because, especially with uh, again, I keep playing this because it blows my mind that these are super fans. So many of them, Anthony in the house, and anybody. I don't care if there's one or two super fans. You spread the word, Anthony in that house is a target you get that man out as fast as can be and the only two people i could actually see putting him up is vivek and dennis or oh, school and bailey and, and, oh. and bailey okay so three <laughs> so <laughs> and, and yeah dennis might not even it might not even do it and you're right yeah. because i forgot him and dennis have been talking a lot too so bailey mm -hmm. and um, uh, who did I say? Vivek. Vivek. Maybe even Vivek can be convinced. That's the thing. I could definitely see him not just going up. Even and if Bailey was like, like, Bailey got, he has relationships with these people. It's yeah. just, 
you can't. what he's doing with Bailey is cr- is crazy. Like I, like that part, I'm just like, why are you guys fighting? Like, let's calm, let's calm mm-hmm. down or whatever. But I think the way that he's been able to get in there and manage that threat level, and he was just the last HOH, he was mm-hmm. able to get a girl out, and now another girl is going out right. the door mm-hmm. again. And he, from the first week, he did talk to the guys and like kind of establish that possible working with these guys later. I don't like. I don't think a Todd would put him up. I think he would. He'd be able to have the control over it. So like, mm-hmm. I do think he's doing a little bit too much in some senses where I'm not gonna just give him the highest rating. But I have to put him either pair with Kayla because I do think he's protected or slightly below. I, I'm a I'm a seven. I'm a pair of them. I'm a pair of you. I think he, for what his, he should be, the way that he should be looked in that house, and it's like this week, it's almost like no one's even thinking about him besides those two girls, and one of them's going. So I yeah. think it's good. Yeah, I feel like it's almost as like he probably should be a bigger target than what he is. Like only a yeah. few people are saying his name. More people should be saying his name. Everyone should mm-hmm. be. He has the directors. He has the hot chocolates within that. He has stragglers like Tola, like yeah. Todd, who may protect him. Now, the, I feel like the only way he's fucked him and Victoria is if Vivek, Dennis, Todd, Bailey, and Donna, before she leaves, have an understanding. But mm-hmm. they also need to understand it needs to be Anthony next to Victoria at this point. Even if mm-hmm. you put Anthony next to Tola, Tola goes. Yeah. Anthony has too many votes in this game. It's like there's only a specific scenario that works. I don't even think they're gonna get that. Like Bailey, I don't think Bailey will put up Victoria. I think she will put up Anthony and Tola. I think yeah. Vivek. I don't think I don't see him putting. I don't see him necessarily being bold enough to do both of them. You know, mm-hmm. I just feel like they have Same so many securities keeping them good, and I feel like Anthony. You know, because like I said earlier, he the the gender divide is still there. He's coming out on top. You know, on top of that. He the, the big sister alliance is shattered by the sister. Okay. So it's like he did no work in breaking up that group. And it's broken up now. You know what I mean? If he wanted to, he could pull probably Bailey away from it, you know? So I don't I just feel like he definitely with the way he's playing, because I'm watching this like I'm gonna start watching him like live. I've seen weekend um seven, but not in action. So watching him in action, I honestly just a part of me feels like there's not much that people can do to really get him at this point. Like, I honestly, mm-hmm. I just feel like this is a pretty intellectual man. And like, he does brag about it, but I think, I mean, some shit he be saying, it's true, no shade. Like, he ain't like what? what's stopping him from getting to the end of this <laughs> game at this point? And mm-hmm. with with people like Victoria and, and Avery and Bailey, uh, the, the girls in the hot chocolates, you know, getting rid of their pieces, their numbers, it's only going to benefit him. So mm-hmm. I gave him 7.5 last week. I'm going to stick with that. I know that stuff. Hey. Oh, I'm scared for my man. Like if it was the Vec, if it was just the Vec, okay, great. But it's the fact like like the Vec staying, I feel bad about that, but it's like the Vec staying and the girls fucked up their structure. Like that just helps Anthony in my opinion. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Like the fact that, like I was saying earlier, Donna going home is best for him and Lexus of this like core group. I still think it's really good for his game. She said to put him up now. So it's really good for his game that she's going. And she had a lot of the Victoria put Victoria did work for him very much so because she had I feel like the most potential at influencing people. If there was going to be a coalition, Donna being a part of it would have been able to kind of help it stay together because she was so likable. They liked her a lot. She was kind of in the middle of it all. She had this great relationship with Vic, great relationship with Bailey, and great relationship with Todd. She was really in a way the center of that. And I feel like with her gone, Bailey can be pulled in a different direction. Vivek and Dennis are still tight, but do they got the balls? They don't. Um, so y'all spilling. And I don't think he did anything, any bad work this week. Like, I feel like the what he did this week was fine. Like, he didn't do anything wrong. And he was better than last week when he was HOH and he kind of had to be so involved. When he's in the background, he's able to just keep up these relationships. And I feel like that'll just continue into next week. <gasps> I'm so sorry. I'm going to give Anthony... I don't know how hard this is for him. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Mind you, he went first. I'm so sorry. Honestly, y'all, I'm gonna give Anthony a six point five. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna give him a, I'm gonna give him a six point five. Um, I and it's just, get that. It's, yeah. I'm scared for my sister, my brother, my man. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. And that's why I think I'm just being so antsy because, you know, like, you know, if you know it, somebody I in the house. I think next week will determine it because the like, love of your life. 
Yeah. If next week, like Dennis Vivek, Bailey go, like it's like it's done. There is no coalition to go against after, like the vets yes. after that, really. We'll see. Because that's the I thing. Like, we'll be scared. We'll be so scared to like fully go against. So it's like their game never fully gets ruined. Mm-hmm. Okay, I put them in order. Anthony and Taylor are still top two, by the way. Lexus was four last week below Victoria, but now she's above Victoria, Lexus, and Avery. Victoria's bumped down to the last hot chocolate. So the top five is the hot chocolate. Victoria's the fifth one after that. Donna being so high, even though she's going home and sending me. No, right. Let me go ahead and change it to a 3.5. Let me keep playing because she needs to be below Elijah. No, let me stop. <laughs> so then we have um, Matthew and then Elijah and Donna are tied. And then at the bottom is really the people just left out of the loop. Dennis, Vivek, Bailey. Tola and Todd, who we don't know who they're being. So that's how the list is looking. This looks pretty accurate, though. Mm-hmm. This looks pretty accurate. I guess just switch Elijah and Donna because Donna actually going home. But other than that, I'm loving it. It's tea. I do. I do think that Dennis. I mean, he is falling close to the middle there. He I, he should be higher than Donna, in my opinion. But he's gonna be trouble if they don't. Yeah, it's almost Very like if Donna didn't go home this week, which she shouldn't be. I feel like I'm rating her based off the fact that she shouldn't be going home because if she was not, yeah, yeah she yeah. would be probably right here. I'll probably give her a five, but it it's, it's the fact that she's going home from I feel like reasons that she cannot control is like, oh, yeah, very, very random, but um. Hey, we here. I think I like this list. I feel like I'm still interested in what this season can bring because there's so many people not in this little group. We still have options for people to like shake it up. Like we don't really know who's gonna win the next HOH. It could be Dennis and Vivek. And then it's like, oh, they're not taking each other out. They gotta take somebody out. So what's T? And even if it's not Victoria, it's like, I mean, it could be. Who could it be? That's what's interesting. It might be Tola. And it won't be nothing. But it's still interesting. This season can really still get interesting depending on this next stage right now. I'm excited. Yep. That's how I'm feeling. Period. Any more thoughts, y'all? No, child. Well, I'm, I'm going to lose this draft. <laughs> Let's pull up the draft because I almost <laughs> forgot. Let me, let me see so who y'all awesome. picked. <laughs> child, <laughs> it's bad for me. Look at this, y'all. Lee is on the left. I already lost. Uh, oh. Nine, child. Donna next, Vivek after that, Bailey gonna be after that. <laughs> like I'm if, sick. if Lee wins, it will be with Victoria probably. <laughs> or Lexus. 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 Don't Lexus. Or, Lexus. Lexus. or no. Lexus. I think Lexus could still make it there. I, I think so. Victoria or Lexus, but it's like ooh. But <laughs> Pharaoh is finally getting the win. Because Daniel, if you don't know, Pharaoh have lost all of our drafts for surviving Big Brother for the last, <laughs> I don't know. Several four, years. Four years, whatever. However many, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I've lost a lot. And so I came this season swinging. And so I'm like, okay. You definitely I'm came it. swinging, bitch. I'm this like, I'm going, I, I ain't taking right. nobody who's going over. I was like, I can't get the first person out. I can't get the second person out. Good. Donna's finna go. Donna was another one who I was like, ooh, she might can slide her way to the end. So I'm glad she's out. Thank you. Um, now, I don't want, that's the ideally, it's really just the blacks at the end. And if that's the case, it'll be Victoria, Alexis, and then I'll have Kayla, Avery, and Anthony. So I still kind of got like one leg up. So I'm like, yeah. oh, no, I'm fucking with it. <laughs> I'm yeah, you'll be I have no idea. Like right now, I, like usually I'm very like, I see my who I think is going to win the season. Like I usually mm-hmm. have a good like mm-hmm. feeling for that. I'm confused. I have no idea. I feel like it can go any way right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. I was actually going to ask like, do you have a winner pick? But it's like, it was Avery at the start, but now I, mm-hmm. I do think that Kayla and Lexus are the best position of what, from what I feel right now. Mm-hmm. But And then things change in Big Brother. Big Brother is so interesting because things can just switch up quick. Right. But, um, we have Victoria, as I know it. This week we're about to go into is the week where right. it, the, it's the week for, that drove our season. So we'll see. Yeah. It usually is what week three. Week three usually sets like a good precedent for the season, whether it's solidifying what's going to happen. We saw that recent. I don't know if that's and, recent with Bob POC seasons or I just started thinking about it in Bob POC seasons, but with BB23, BB24, BB24, that's when the leftovers was created. BB23, that's when Xavier won his HOH and solidified the. Uh, Cook out for sure, for sure. They won two in a row. It's just consistently this week three is very, mm, 
Like, and, at, don't care. And, and in this house, in Big Brother Canada now, the way they've been doing it the past two years, it's really the fourth week. So they've known these mm-hmm. people for a month. You, you, you're feel, you know who you're feeling out at this point. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So this is where it starts. It's when it start getting real, child. Yeah, and honestly, it's gonna be interesting yeah. because unless Dougie win again, this is gonna be the first HOH that's not a returnee. So, mm-hmm. what are their thoughts we'll gonna what, be? We'll see how that goes. All right, y'all. Um, we'll be here all season. Every Tuesday, we do a recap and we do a player rating like we did today. On Thursdays, we are doing eviction um, uh, exit interviews. So check those exit interviews out every Thursday. We're also covering Survivor every Wednesday. We're booked and busy and we're doing an amazing race, period. So check all of that out. And thank you for watching. Go to YouTube and subscribe to us at The Reality Kingdom. And thanks for keeping it real with the kingdom. And we out. Bye.